Oh, the hypocrisy. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. I want to talk about the masculine pick-me girl. I think you could also call this the hypocritical pick me girl and i'll get into what i mean by that and the explanation of that in this video this video was actually inspired by well some things i've been thinking about for a while but also i did a video talking about trad wives if you want to check that out and i actually mentioned in that video how trad wives while they present this very performative femininity most trad wives do not embrace actual true feminine energy that actually got a really positive response as well i also have a video talking a little bit about Pearl from just pearly things and breaking down a little bit of her message and why she's not in a relationship and that video was also very popular so if you want to check out those videos I also have a video kind of going into more depth of what a pick me girl actually is so I have other videos in this category you know I really should make a playlist a few details before we get into this video first of all when I talk about a pick me girl by definition I'm talking about a woman that is willing to compromise herself or other women out of a desperate need Need for uh, male attention, male validation, or just to be in a relationship. That can come in many different forms, and I do think that we tend to have sort of a very stereotypical idea of like what a pick me girl is. But I think that it does come in a lot of different forms, and I think anytime a woman is actually willing to compromise herself, her integrity, her safety, or you know the integrity or safety of other women solely out of a desperate need for male attention, male validation, or to be in a relationship, I would consider that a pick me girl. And it's not a healthy place to be in. It's actually very dangerous for the woman in particular and for women in general. And I have mentioned this before in other videos that the reality is that <laughs> pick me girls don't tend to get picked or if they do they're not picked by quality men they tend to attract men who are abusers users men in their ego like they don't tend to get picked by men who actually are going to treat them the way that men should treat the woman they're in a relationship with um, and i have other videos going into that more detail now i've also mentioned this before in several other videos but if you're new just a little backstory i consider myself a recovering pick me girl not necessarily in the current sense of like i wasn't around like trying to tear other women down or anything but I definitely in my younger years and I'm sure that this is very common with a lot of women in my younger years I definitely spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to conform myself into what I thought men wanted trying to just you know be whatever I thought men wanted me to be or to really kind of like structure my life to find a guy or get a guy or something and I don't want to say it was wasted time because I did learn some things and there were some things I picked up from that experience that I actually still enjoy. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't try to learn to cook because I thought it would impress a man, but I genuinely enjoy cooking and, you know, that is what it is. But I do feel like I wish I had not spent quite so much of my life trying to figure out what men wanted and trying to figure out what I want. So I would really love to impart what I have learned from that experience onto other women, hopefully the younger generation, so that maybe you can learn from some of the mistakes that I made. I can tell you from, you know, being a pick-me girl and trying desperately to conform to what I thought men wanted, I can tell you it never got me a good relationship, ever. So for guys who want to criticize me and tell me all the reasons why I'm still single, I can guarantee you that everything that you say about me and why I'm still single, not accurate. It's not because I wasn't desperate to try to please a man, because I absolutely was a complete people pleaser doormat in most of my past relationships. And yeah, they kept me around, but like they didn't treat me well. And it certainly didn't get me a healthy relationship. I'm going off on a tangent here, but I just want to give a little explanation of like, my background and where I'm coming from from this video. I also want to mention I'm going to talk a little bit about masculine and feminine energies in this video. I actually just did a video recently about sort of the basics of masculine and feminine energies and I have a lot of videos talking about masculine and the feminine in my content if you want to do more research about those energies. It's not a performative masculinity or a performative femininity that you would expect men or women to fit into i'm talking about them energetically so you can think about things like the yin and the yang or things like that we all contain both energies both masculine and feminine however we all have a core energy that's the one that we're we're our best selves in for most women that will be feminine and for most men that will be masculine it's not universal but the majority of cases that's the the situation but it is actually important for 
any human to have a connection to both their healthy masculine and their healthy feminine energies because there are just certain situations where being in your masculine energy is just more appropriate and certain situations where being in your feminine energy is just more appropriate. But generally speaking, you want to live your life and conduct your life in a way that you get to be in your natural core energy the majority of the time. That's very hard today, particularly for women, because we live in a very masculine oriented society. So in order to survive in a society, you tend to have to be very masculine. It, it's particularly difficult for women because we live in a very masculine oriented society and women are really expected to be masculine in society today. We get shamed for it, but we also are expected to be masculine because that's what we need to do for survival. I'm not gonna dive into that in this video too much because that's a whole other topic, but you can be in wounded or healed versions of either of these energies and anybody can be. So men can be wounded masculine or wounded feminine. Women can be wounded masculine or wounded feminine. You want to strive for a healthy version of your masculine feminine energies, but it is very easy and very common in our society today to have wounding in either of those energies for anybody. And also to have sexual polarity in a relationship, you need one partner to be in the masculine and one partner to be in the feminine because opposite energies attract same energies repel sexually. So when I talk about the masculine energy pick me girl, I want to make it very clear before I get into this that I'm not shaming women for being in their masculine energy. Most women today who are living from their masculine energy and are in their masculine energy the majority of the time are doing so because they feel like they need to because they feel like it gives them a sense of safety. And I understand that. I have a ton of empathy for that. I don't think it's the healthiest place to be in and I think it actually, especially if you're a feminine cord being, being in your masculine energy all the time is going to drain you. And very often we see an increase in health issues in women, mental health, physical health, particularly reproductive health. I really do think that there's a strong connection between that and all the women that are suffering from things like PCOS and, you know, all kinds of other menstrual cycle issues and stuff. Not to say that there aren't, you know, medical basis for a lot of these things, but I think a lot of it is women who are really feeling like they have to live from their masculine energy. And I don't shame women for having to do that because as much as I don't think it's healthy, I understand that for the majority of women, I definitely can say from my generation, and I think younger is young girls are basically trained and conditioned to be very masculine. We don't teach men how to be masculine, which is a whole other conversation that I'm not gonna get into. But women do definitely get pushed into masculine energy. So I don't shame women for being in their masculine. That said, if a woman has a connection to her healthy masculine energy and can use that at times when it actually you know, is appropriate, like you know, to make money in the workspace or things like that, and that can be a good thing. I mean, it can be a positive thing. Women actually embodying a healthy masculine energy can be very beneficial. That said, it can kind of mess you up in romantic relationships, and I have other videos going into that. Also too, wounded masculine energy tends to be very abusive. So if you're a woman and you're living from masculine energy, if it's a healthy masculine energy and it's benefiting you in your life, more power to you. When it starts to get wounded and it starts to become like outwardly abusive, that's usually when there's a problem. Wounded masculine energy in men is very dangerous. That's, it's kind of what we would call toxic masculinity. But when it shows up in women, it's not healthy. I don't think, women don't tend to, when they get any wounded masculine energy, they don't tend to get as physically violent. Not that it doesn't happen, but it, it it's more common in men, wounded masculine, toxic masculinity, for men to get physically violent. And I've talked about this in other videos, like violence to protect is different than violence to abuse. So I wanna make, I go into that in other videos, but I just wanna make a distinction. But for women, when they get into wounded masculine, and I talked a lot about this in my Mean Girls breakdown, when women get into wounded masculine energy, it tends to be very, very gossipy. It tends to be a lot of verbal abuse. It can actually manifest into women verbally abusing other women. I mean, it can be men, but in this particular case, I'm gonna talk more about women verbally abusing other women. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can also manifest in this massive extreme perfectionism, which oftentimes will then result in shaming other people for not being like you or for not being perfect. Like wounded masculine energy isn't healthy for anybody to be in. And I wanna talk a little bit more about how it manifests in women and how it shows up in kind of this sort of phenomenon of like the masculine pick me girl. So I'm gonna get into that in this video. 
I do want to make it clear though when I talk about the masculine pick me girl I'm talking about masculine energy from an energetic perspective so none of this has anything to do with if you're a girl and you just happen to be interested in a an activity that's more popular with guys so like if you're a woman who's like no I genuinely like to like drink beer and go to a baseball game or something like that like I don't want to change that or I don't want to give that up or anything like that I'm not talking about giving up interests or giving up hobbies or giving up things that you genuinely enjoy genuinely enjoying stuff and finding joy and pleasure out of life is very feminine energy even if you're doing it in a very uh, a more like traditionally masculine activity feminine energy is joy pleasure sensuality and those things so like i'm not here to tell you can't do certain activities i have a video talking about masculine feminine energy fitness myths where i kind of break down the whole like myth of like lifting weights is masculine and pilates is feminine kind of thing which is not what i buy into so i'm not talking about a performative masculinity or performative femininity i'm talking about like true masculine feminine energies and you can approach almost any activity from a masculine or a feminine perspective so for any women watching this like when I talk about connecting to your feminine energy or talking about masculine energy or anything I'm not telling you like hey you have to give up you know watching football on Sunday because you need to be in the kitchen cooking feminine energy is about what brings you joy and pleasure so I don't want you to feel like you have to reject certain activities or accept certain activities just solely to fit some kind of like ridiculous stereotype that's not where I'm coming from also in this video I mm, I don't love throwing out people's names and calling out people by name necessarily particularly like social media influencers and stuff especially ones whose message I don't agree with I realize that calling out people and getting in some kind of like online social media feud would probably fuel engagement I have been cursed with a moral compass and I don't like giving attention to people who I think have a really bad message but I also do want to give some examples of what I'm talking about so if I do mention anybody it'll probably be larger creators that already have a big following that people are already more familiar with like say Pearl or Candace Owens which I mentioned in the Pearls video because they already have large platforms and that people are more familiar with them there are some like smaller creators that are actually coming up I don't really want to give them shout outs personally because I don't really remember their names because I try not to engage with too much of this content because I find it so unhealthy like you know I have a video talking about Pearl and everything and you know I, I actually thought I was very fair with her I think I, I gave her a lot more empathy than I think a lot of people would have and she is an example of this sort of masculine pick me girl energy that I'm going to talk about she's not the first she's certainly not the only and she probably won't be the last but she is one of the more popular influencers and I do think that she has sort of started a model for this and gotten a lot of attention for this with her presentation with her personality at least the way she presents herself that is becoming kind of a model or a formula for other female influencers who are not doing things exactly the way that Pearl's doing them but I think that they're using her as sort of a model for getting a certain audience and and you know while I am a proponent of freedom of speech and I think people should be allowed to say what they want to say and have their own perspectives and have their voices heard and you can agree or disagree with them. I also think that we're going down a dangerous path and we've been doing this for a while now but anything that is really edgy, over the top, controversial, extreme perspectives that get all the attention and it really does I think set the wrong message because the reality is is that the majority of the people in the world are not extremists. The majority of the people in the world are very middle of the road with things. But if you present very middle of the road or, you know, nuanced perspectives like I always try to do, you don't get as many views, you know? And when you start going into the extremes and doing things that are much more edgy and controversial, it gets more views. And I think because of that and because those people are the ones that get fame, attention, money, it fuels other people to have those extreme views because they are like, well, hey, I want fame, attention, and money. And when you get enough people and enough loud voices and that's the content that everyone's seeing, it really does put everybody, you know, that you know is in the population into this mindset of like, oh, everybody must be an extremist. So I think that this this whole sort of phenomenon goes deeper than just oh tune these people out if you don't like what they have to say kind of thing but i'm also a big advocate of freedom of speech so i'm not really a fan of censorship but you know i think if you're gonna have a society where you have freedom of speech and people are gonna voice all their different opinions i think it's really important to have people who are willing to question those opinions so yeah that's what I'm gonna do so when I talk about this kind of phenomenon of the masculine pick-me-girl I want to make it clear 
I don't judge women for being in their masculine energy because sometimes it's just more appropriate to be in your masculine energy. However, the problem with this type of pick me girl that I'm talking about is the hypocrisy. This is the type of woman that will create content or, you know, maybe just in everyday life or something who will shame women for being in their masculine energy, who will say that women should be more feminine, who will criticize things like feminism, who will talk about, you know, men being masculine and things like that while these women are in their masculine energy. And they're very masculine, I would say very wounded masculine, very aggressive, very nasty oftentimes towards women as a way to like shame women into being more feminine. So they're telling women to be more feminine while actively being very masculine about it. And my thing is like, if you wanna be in your masculine energy and you wanna be a masculine woman or you think that it's appropriate to be in your masculine energy while you're creating content or while you're doing your job or whatever, fine. But the fact that you are embodying very masculine energy as a woman to shame women into being more feminine is complete hypocrisy. That's the issue. And I would say creators like Just Pearly Things, Candace Owens, they're, they're two very popular examples of this. They're, they're women who have shamed feminism, which I have a video talking about feminism and femininity. It's an older video. I could do an updated one if you guys want me to do a more updated video on this, but I don't really call myself a feminist particularly, but if I did identify with feminism, it would absolutely be first wave feminism. I'm definitely not a radical feminist by any means. And I find it funny that I actually, when I did my original video about feminism and femininity, it was a couple years ago, I think at this point, I said in the video that when I was talking about feminism, I was talking more about modern radical feminism because I kind of assumed that like anybody with a brain cell would be on board with sort of like the first wave feminism and like we're not really having debates about whether or not women should vote because that's crazy. Fast forward to today and we actually have women, <laughs> men too, but we also have women who are sort of these like manosphere influencers <laughs> who are actually questioning whether or not women should be allowed to vote. So I guess that tells you how many brain cells certain people have. But don't even get me started <laughs> about female political commentators that bash feminism and women having the right to vote. I think that women should be absolutely allowed to be political commentators and I think having women give commentary on politics I think is is great because I think it's, you know, women make up 50% of the population. We should have a voice. We should have a say in politics. I mean, I mean, if you choose to, you don't have to have public opinions about politics. That's your choice. But the irony of women giving political commentaries while also arguing for women not having the right to vote. I, I mean, that that's insane. Just Pearly Things says this a lot with her commentary where she'll literally bash women and say women shouldn't have an opinion, women are not smart, women are the problem with everything, women shouldn't be taken seriously, and then she'll give a whole slew of opinions and it's like, well, why should we listen to you because aren't you a woman? So this is the type of thing that I'm talking about. I mean, this can obviously happen on a smaller scale with women just in everyday life. I mean, I'm sure we've all met sort of a, a girl who engages in misogyny, who bashes other women or things like that, or is, you know, shames women for doing things that aren't even really feminist anymore. They're just like normal human things, <laughs> like voting <laughs> or driving a car or having a bank account or something like that. And it's like, women shouldn't be allowed to do that stuff. And I mean, I, luckily, I don't think that mentality is very common nowadays, but I think when you get these major influencers who start saying these things, which I'm sure they're saying these things because they get attention, they get views, they're controversial, they're edgy. A Pearl has been demonetized. Why would she care if she'd been demonetized if she wasn't allowed to have a bank account? You know, it's it's women who I see a lot of these commentators, um, you know, Pearl isn't married and doesn't have kids at this point, but like there are a lot of other like female commentators that have podcasts and shows and things like that who are wives, who are mothers and they bash women for prioritizing career over having a family when it's like, okay, but you're a working mom. Like, and I realize that a lot of these women are part-time working moms and you know, they're in a situation where they don't have to work full-time and raise a family, understandable. You know, everybody's in their own individual situation, but I just find it ironic that women who become social media influencers, which is a job, like it's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not somebody, I know a lot of people want to argue whether it's a real job. People want to argue about how difficult a job it is or things like that or whatever. And I'm not going to get into the complexities of that. But if you're getting paid to do it, it's, it's a job. 
you know, especially some of these more high profile influencers who have podcasts or have big platforms or things like that, you know, a lot of them have staff and things like, you can't argue that's not a job. The fact that, that they'll create these platforms to shame women for working and having careers is really ironic. Again, you wanna be a woman that has a career and you, maybe you choose career over having a family, your choice. Maybe you wanna have a career and a family. If you can pull that off, your choice. Maybe you are choosing a family and choosing not to have a career, your choice. I have a problem with a woman who like is making a career out of shaming women for choosing to have a career. <laughs> like, like I just, I don't understand Maybe I'm too logical, which is my masculine energy for sure. I, I don't understand how people can justify that in their head. I just can't. Like, I just don't understand that at all. And look, when I talk about masculine feminine energies, right? So when I come here and I create content, I can't fully be in my feminine energy. I definitely get into my feminine energy sometimes. Like when I go off on tangents and I start going whatever, because like I tell people, when I start talking from my feminine energy, like I have a destination, but you're gonna have to take the scenic route to get there. Like I rarely go from point A to point B. Masculine energy is from point A to point B. Like, that's what it is. Feminine energy, like, you're gonna be all over the place and go the scenic route. So when I create a lot of this content, sometimes I get into my feminine energy and I start going off on tangents and I start, you know, going whatever. The fact that I actually, like, sit down, set up a camera, I have the structure, I have, and I'm actually giving you information, I, I am enacting some of my masculine energy. I actually don't have any problem with, you know, a podcast hosts or, you know, commentators or things even if they're women who if they want to you know create commentary and you know they embody their masculine energy while they do it nothing wrong with that the problem is when you're creating that commentary from a very masculine place and shaming women for being too masculine there's a hypocrisy there <laughs> and i i can't believe that some of these women don't see it like i feel like they have to see it now that's Said, shaming and bashing women is not like healthy masculine energy. Healthy masculine energy would simply be giving a statistic or giving a piece of information or even giving an opinion or something and being very direct about it. That would be masculine energy. And that's not wrong, not bad. Many times that's necessary in life. The shaming and bashing of other people, that kind of thing, the slinging insults and those kind of things, that's very wounded masculine. And that's what a lot of these women are doing. They're in very wounded masculine energy, that aggression. I would even go so far as, and this could be healthy or unhealthy, debating, very masculine. Because competition is masculine. If you are competing with somebody, you're in your masculine energy. Now, not right or wrong, there are times when it is perfectly acceptable to be in some kind of a competition you know, hopefully a healthy competition with somebody else. If you are in a debate, I mean, there are times when debates are absolutely important and necessary. There are times when competition is healthy. However, competition is masculine. Feminine energy is not competitive. I don't mean women aren't competitive, but when a woman is being competitive, she's in her masculine energy. Feminine energy is about community, connection, sisterhood. So if you are going on social media, and trashing women and what a lot of these women do is they trash women with this like but i'm better than you like what i do is better than you because i know better than you or like i'm better than you because i'm a mother or i'm better than you because i have a husband or i'm better than you because i submit to my husband or i'm better than you because i did this whatever and i'm not saying every woman does this but when you are a woman who's doing that you are inherently in your masculine energy if you're a woman that's going online and being like i'm so much more feminine than you you should be more feminine because women are supposed to be feminine and i'm more feminine than you you are in inherently in your masculine energy while you're saying it because you're literally setting up a competition with who can be more feminine and when you get into a competition of who can be more feminine you are innately in your masculine energy and i would say in those cases a very unhealthy version of your masculine energy you can be in a very healthy version of your masculine energy and sometimes you need to compete with somebody sometimes competition is just necessary but if it's coming from a place of trying to like shame someone else or bash someone else or trying to like prove for your own ego's sake that you're better than somebody else that's a very unhealthy like wounded or toxic masculine energy so if you're a woman that's doing that you're actually toxically masculine which is ironic because it's typically those same women that create that kind of content that claim that toxic masculinity isn't a thing while inherently being very toxically masculine themselves <laughs>
because things like toxic masculinity what that really is is it's like an ego version of masculinity it's a false sense of masculinity it, it's basically trying to present yourself as being more powerful just from a place of ego women can do that as well as men can do that there are a lot of men who do that but there's also a lot of women who do that and i would say a lot of these sort of i would call them masculine pick me girls many of them claim that toxic masculinity isn't a thing while inherently being very toxically masculine themselves as women it's also interesting too and i, I kind of mentioned like in the trad wives video that i made which again i don't bash women who choose to be a trad wife or anything like that but a lot of it again tends to be very performative femininity and one thing i'm seeing with like i think some smaller influencers is you'll find women who will have a very masculine presentation and not a healthy masculine but a very like wounded masculine of being very competitive like having this like ego aggression or things like that which is actually a very unhealthy masculine presentation but they'll put themselves in like a pretty dress or apron and they'll be like cooking in their kitchen and it's like look how feminine I am I'm so much more feminine than you and it's like you inherently are masculine by doing that like your energy is masculine by aggressively trying to prove your feminine energy to prove that you're like better than women that aren't doing what you're doing like that is inherently masculine in its presentation while trying to pretend as if you are more feminine than any other woman it, like the hypocrisy and the irony of the whole thing is kind of overwhelming. And I also noticed there, there's, there's a similar variation to that too of the woman who presents herself in a very sexual way but then shames women for doing things like OnlyFans or for posting like sexy photos of themselves. It's women who are like male advocates that will post pictures of themselves in like very sexualized outfits for attention on their content and then they shame women for posting like sexy photos or bikini photos or things like that for attention on their content or who make only fans or things like that and it's just sort of like wait a second so it's okay for you to post sexualized content as long as you're calling yourself a a male advocate but it's not okay for another woman to post like a bikini photo or something simply because she's not a male advocate and and i've i have other videos talking about my perspectives on women who sexualize themselves in social media and things like that i'm not going to get into the right or wrongs of that i just think if you as a woman are going to sexualize yourself while simultaneously bashing other women for sexualizing themselves simply because the other woman who's sexualizing herself maybe she's doing it for a different reason or maybe because she's just doesn't agree with your perspective or whatever that's hypocrisy i'm simply calling out hypocrisy show your body don't show your body that's irrelevant to the conversation but like it's hypocritical i've seen this too before with like some of the and i don't want to make this political but i see this with some like like conservative female accounts who will post a picture of themselves like in a bikini or whatever and then like a few posts go by and then all of a sudden it's something about like basically like bashing women for posting bikini photos of themselves and it's like girl you just did that a few days ago how is that different? Like, how is it different? Is it because you posted the photo and decided to say you were some kind of like a men's rights advocate, but this other woman who was like, I'm gonna post this photo to empower women, now she's a slut. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't good and bad reasons why people may post a bikini photo and I don't wanna dive into all that kind of thing. And I'm not saying that there aren't dangers in sexually exploiting yourself on social media and things like that. And that's for a whole other, video but there is a lot of hypocrisy in that like there's a lot of hypocrisy in women justifying a lot of their behavior and then shaming other women for having that same behavior simply because they just want to shame or bash other women or they want to get into competition or something and that's where you get a lot of pick me girl behavior because i think you get a lot of these women and i see it i don't like to take this thing political <laughs> Because I don't think this is specifically rooted in politics. I think a lot of this behavior hides behind politics. Because you see it more on political extremists. And I say this as a, and I've mentioned this in other videos. I have other videos talking about masculine and feminine energies and politics and things like that. If you want to get into that. And I, I talk a little bit more about my political views. I'm not a radical liberal by any means. I'm, I'm actually quite right-leaning. But I do admit that there are a lot of, I would say, conservative extremists that get into this mentality and and personally i don't appreciate it because i think it makes people who are more right-leaning look bad now granted there are left extremists who make the whole left look bad so this can go both ways but i do find a lot of this sort of like masculine 
pick me girl energy does happen a lot from like conservative extremists. Now, whether or not these women actually like agree with what they're saying or whether they're just doing it for controversy or for attention or views, I don't know. Like I'm not in their head, I don't really know. I will say that, you know, obviously like, you know, people like Pearl have, you know, made it very clear that, that you can have a lot of success and attention and make a lot of money doing this kind of content because there is an audience for that. However, the audience that you're going to attract is going to be a very particular type of audience, typically male, and it's typically going to be men that hate women. So if you as a woman then create content for men who hate women, you really put yourself into a box of having to trash other women in order to keep that audience. This is one of the issues with people who make extreme content because if you ever veer from that extremist content, you lose your audience. I would say, I mean, for sure someone like Pearl, 100%, I think this applies to her. I think this probably applies to some other people. Like in say like a Pearl situation, if she ever, ever even hinted at all that she was in support of women in any way, she would lose her whole audience. And I don't think she's the only person in this situation, but there definitely is, I'd say a category of female influencer that does fall into this category of the masculine pick me girl that has to keep her perspectives and her views so anti-woman because if she ever hinted at all that she supported women or a woman or anything in any way, she would lose her audience because her audience is men who have a deep hatred of women. Probably from issues with their mother or learned behavior from a father figure or something like these are these are like deep seated issues that these men have. So what happens when you have a platform with these kind of extreme views like this, it puts you in a in a box like you pretty much have to maintain this extremist view and in these particular cases of these masculine pick me girls, it has to be an extreme anti-woman view because if you veer from that even slightly to show any kind of nuance in the conversation of like supporting women, you'll be canceled you'll be done. Because your audience will be like, see, I knew it. I knew we couldn't trust women. I knew we couldn't believe women. I knew that women were, were out to get us. Because you're dancing that fine line. You're a woman that's in a very anti-woman space. I kind of understand how Pearl feels like she has to stay that extreme because she would lose her whole audience if she ever even hinted that she was supportive of women. I, I Personally, I think she could gain a new audience. I will go so far as I don't want to make this video all about Pearl because I do, I do have another video talking about her. But I'll use her as an example because she's a high profile influencer. I firmly believe that if Pearl disappeared, like she had to go away, not too long nowadays because the turnover time for people's attention is quite quick. But if she like disappeared for a while and then came back totally rebranded, was like did a lot of inner work on myself, whatever, and was like, I'm here to be a, a woman's rights advocate. It might be a tough sell and there would still be some women who would not go along with it, but women would be accepting most women would eventually be like, girl, welcome to our side. We'll, we'll, we'll accept you. Not every woman, but I think a lot of women would. Might take a little time, but it could happen. However, if she ever, ever in her current platform and her current branding ever even hinted that she was pro-woman or she ever supported a woman or ever said something that wasn't in the extreme of anti-woman, she would lose her whole male audience. They would turn on her in a heartbeat. I'm not trying to get people to feel sorry for her by any means because I do think she did this to herself. However, that's a terrifying place to be in. Like you could see why somebody like that would feel a desperate need to make sure that you were as radically anti-woman as possible or else you're just gonna lose everything. Like I could see where somebody could get into that situation. Now, I wouldn't personally get myself into that situation, but you could see where that could happen. And I'm just using her as an example because I'm more familiar with her content than some other influencers and things like that. I, I unfortunately know too much about Pearl. I've tried to avoid knowing much about her, but I haven't been able to completely avoid it. And to be honest with you, I mean, with any influencer online, and this goes for male or female, I don't care how extreme, every once in a while, they have good points. I've seen some of the most disgusting manosphere people out there and every once in a while they'll say something I'm like yeah it's a good point doesn't mean that I agree with them as a person doesn't mean that I want to support them as a person doesn't mean that I think that they have a healthy platform just means that everyone I mean what is the what is the saying that like 
a broken clock is right twice a day. And honestly, I'm a big believer that you should never follow anybody blindly. Anyway, but even if people have a lot of credentials, that is an interesting thing about credentials I've noticed. If somebody agrees with you, they never ask you what your credentials are. They never ask, you could completely know nothing about a subject, but if somebody agrees with you or wants to agree with you, they'll just believe you. Whereas if you say something that somebody disagrees with, all of a sudden it's like, where, where are your credentials? Again, you know, I'm not saying you should follow anybody blindly, and that goes for me as well. But I do think we should be really mindful if you only care about someone's credentials when you disagree with them, but you don't care about somebody's credentials when you do agree with them, you might wanna take a look at that. I guess the whole gist of this video is you have to be very careful about who you follow online. I think you have to be really careful who you get exposed to online. I'm sure there are gonna be men that are gonna to come to this content and be like, well, what about women who go online and bash men? I'm, I'm not saying that women that go online and, and just trash men and say that all men are terrible and whatever. I'm not saying that's a healthy place to be in by any means. Because I think living from a place of hatred, particularly hatred of like half of the population, is probably not healthy for yourself. I think women need to have a healthy awareness of men and what's going on with men and their own safety and things like that. However, you know, I'm not sitting here and trying to advocate for women that just go online and just like trash men and say like all men are garbage or whatever. However, there's a difference between a woman who goes online and just trashes men and a woman who goes online and trashes women for say being too masculine while they themselves are being very masculine, right? It's the hypocrisy. I don't even have a problem with a woman being very masculine, but if you're gonna be very masculine and attack women for not being more feminine, that's hypocritical and that's a problem. And I get a little bit more into this in the video of Earl and why she hasn't been picked and things like that, but the masculine pick me girl, while she will probably get a lot of attention and validation from men, and some men may even want to sleep with her depending on her attractiveness level like if she is more conventionally attractive men will probably want to sleep with her anyway especially if she's doing what i think of some of these women do which is like sexualizing themselves and then being the more masculine pick me girl as i mentioned in the other video if they're just masculine in their job in their career and then they can shift that into being more feminine in their personal life they might be able to attract a masculine partner i mean there's variations here but generally speaking if if a woman who is very masculine and is going online and very aggressively bashing other women or aggressively trashing other women for not being more feminine or things like that because she's in her wounded masculine she's probably going to attract a more wounded feminine male the wounded feminine male is the the woe is me the eternal victim very very passive guy often what we think of as like a covert narcissist like that kind of thing the majority of women who are sort of the masculine pick me girls who are in a very wounded masculine energy their audience of men tends to be a very wounded feminine male a male who's just sunk into victimhood who doesn't know how to get out of his own way probably has a lot of addiction issues very passive like that kind of a man that's the audience so that's the kind of man that this woman is going to attract into her life whether it be her social media platform or whether it be in her personal life and i do think it is possible for women to embody more masculine energy in their workspace and then come home and embody more of a feminine energy in their personal life however if you have a lot of wounded masculine energy in any area of your life, that shift is gonna be a lot more complicated because because that energy is coming from wounding. Like when you have wounding in some area of your life, it's gonna make any area of your life being really like healthy and well adjusted a lot trickier. So the point of this video is not to get into the shame or blame or anything like that. If you see some of yourself in this video, I don't want you to, you know, start shaming yourself or anything like that. I really do believe awareness is the first step. I think anytime you're dealing with some kind of like pick me behavior, being aware of it is kind of the first step. It's not a healthy place to be. And I know there's a lot of men who want women to be more pick me's, but yet, as I've said in other videos, pick me's don't get picked. <laughs> like it really just strokes men's ego and it's not gonna help you get like a deep soulful relationship. If this is about energetics. So if you're a woman who maybe gets accused of being a pick me girl because you happen to like football or lifting weights or something like that or whatever, like that has nothing to do with it. That's not what I'm talking about. Connecting to your feminine energy is about joy, pleasure, excitement, intuition, connecting to your body, things like that. So if these things are things that really truly bring you joy and pleasure, even if they're considered more like, you know, male oriented activities, by all means do them. This is not about like changing who you are at your core. I do think if you're finding yourself sinking into a lot of like woman bashing or misogyny or things like that in your life, as particularly as a woman, I mean, as a man too, but as a woman, take a look at that. Cause 
that probably at the root of it is coming from some wounding. Like I know in today's day and age where women are actually sort of conditioned to compete with each other and we're conditioned to see each other as the enemy and things like that, it can be really easy to fall into this situation. I know I was in a male dominated field for many, many years. So I fell into a lot of these habits over time. And I think it's just, it's just helpful to look at. Probably a lot of these things are, you know, patterns or things that you fell into because you know, at the time they felt safe for you. At the time they maybe felt like the right thing to do. And, you know, as you learn and you grow, you can become more aware of these things. And living in a state of bashing women, competing with women, trying to tear other women down just to get male attention or male validation is not a healthy way to live. Because I gotta be honest with you, if you keep doing that, you're not gonna get yourself a good guy. You're gonna get yourself an asshole. <laughs> like that's unfortunately because it's asshole men that are attracted to women who love to bash other women because you end up with men who have a deep hatred of women. <laughs> I, I've known a lot of those guys. They're not relationship material. <laughs> I can tell you that. So yeah, I'm not here to like bash or shame. I wanna point out hypocrisy. I wanna point out places where I think we're being misled. I have a lot of requests for videos about the hypocrisy of the manosphere, which I'm gonna work on, but there's so many of them. It just gets so difficult. So I thought I would start with some of the uh, hypocrisy in some of the women that support the manosphere. I mean, I think, it, you know, you look at women that actually support Andrew Tate, that'll tell you the women that you got to watch out for. Um, if you as a woman are out there supporting a man who there is a huge amount of evidence is actually a human trafficker. While a lot of these people would fight human trafficking if it was in somebody that they didn't support. Again, that's where you get into hypocrisy. So anyway, a lot of tangents here. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel. You know, any engagement on this video, just it helps boost it in the algorithm, gets more people's eyes on it. So, you know, if you have any comments or thoughts on this video or any other video suggestions, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and I love your video suggestions. If you would like to heal your feminine energy, a great way to do that is to connect to your dark feminine energy which will help teach you that feminine energy is not all just love and light. It's not all like pretty bows. There is so much complexity in feminine energy and dark feminine energy is a wonderful way to learn to heal from that. Your wounded masculine, wounded feminine, you know, connect to your feminine energy. Dark feminine energy is a huge part of that healing process. So if you're interested in learning more about dark feminine energy, I have the dark feminine energy guided journal. It's available on Amazon. Link is in the description box below with long links to courses, masterclasses, and all my social media accounts. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.